theyeshiva.net. Daf Bez, Amud Bez, the middle of the middle of the page. The line starts Minissen. <coughs> Till Daf Bez Amud Bez, the Gemara established the meaning of Rosh Hashanah Lamalach and what it means. It means that the Chazal felt the need to establish a day when all kings celebrate their own Rosh Hashanah, meaning this is called the beginning of their anniversary of becoming a king. And what's that day? Rosh Chodesh Nisim. That's till this point. With all of the various halachas around it, if somebody died in Adar, if somebody uh, became a king in Nisim, etc. Now the question becomes, why Nisim? So Rabbi Yochanan said that it actually has a source no less than in a Pasuk in Tanakh, when the Torah, when the Chuppah, the Tanakh, the Navi in Malachim Aleph, Perig Vav, wants to describe the time that Shloim HaMelech begins to build the first base Amikdash, it gives not one reference of time, but two references of time. He could have given one reference of time. He could have said it happened 480 years after the Jewish people left Egypt. He could have also said it happened in the fourth year of Shloim HaMelech's reign, in the second month of the year, the month of Ziv, which we associated with the month of Ir, which is the second month of the year. Instead, the Tanakh chooses two references of time. One is 480 years since Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim, and one is the fourth year of Shleim HaMelech's monarchy, Shleim HaMelech's reign. From the fact that the Pasuk counts both references of time and puts them together, mamish together in the same Pasuk and describing this momentous event in Shleim HaMelech's life, we learn out a hekesh. We learn out a comparison. And the comparison is that Malchus Shloyme has to be counted and measured in a similar way to Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. And just like Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim happened in the month of Nisan. So naturally, when is going to be the second anniversary of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim? It's going to be Nisan, because <laughs> that's when it happened. You're going to begin celebrating the second year of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim after Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim by the second Nisan. First Nisan is the first Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim, the second is the second Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. So Torah is trying to teach us that the same should be with Malchus Shloyme. No matter when Shloyme became a king, no matter when Shloyme became a king, Nisan should be a new anniversary of his kingship, Aresh Hashanah Le Melachim. That is what Rabbi Yochanan told us. Now, I should just say one point. The anniversary of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim is not Rish Chodesh Nisan. The anniversary of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim is Tesvav Nisan. In other words, the second year of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim, you're not going to start counting Rosh Chodesh Nisan. You have to wait another 15 days till Pesach. And now you're going to say, one year is up, we're starting a second year. If so, if Rabbi Yechina wants to be consistent, he should say, the Bishop should say, Tesvav Nisan Rosh Hashanah Lamalach. That's not the case. It's Be'echad Nisan Rosh Hashanah Lamalach. So it's not Mamish, an exact Hekesh to the story of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. Yes, we're using the same month like Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim, but we're not using the same, the same day like Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. <coughs> so this, this should be emphasized. And the reason I'm emphasizing is because the Chodet's a little schwer. You want to make a Hekish, make a Hekish. Don't split it up in two. So the truth is, there's two ways to look, of looking Regalim, at it. Regalim is Tesvav. Right, so that's interesting. Right. Regalim, the Marshal, is Taka different Rosh Hashanah. The second Rosh Hashanah, Be'echad Benissin Rosh Hashanah Lamalachim V'Liregalim, it's Yomim Toivim. Yomim Toivim don't start Rosh Chodesh Nissen. Yomim Toivim start Tesvav Nissen. The Rosh Hashanah for Yomim Toivim is Tesvav Nissen, because that's the first Yom Tov. And yet when it comes to Lamalachim, we don't say that. We say Rosh Chodesh Nissen. No. Why? If the Rosh Hashanah Lamalachim would be Tesvav Nissen, then if I'm writing a document on Yud Aleph Nissen, or Yud Beis Nissen, or Yud Dalad Nissen, Erev Pesach, it's still the previous year. Okay, I got that. But the point is, it's not a complete hekish. It's a hekish for the month, not for the day. So there's two ways of looking at it. Toysvist Tainas, that, uh, Toysvist Tainas, that you're right. There's a problem here in the Bioichim. There's something missing here. But later, at the end of the suga, we're going to see there's another Pasuk, and that's how Rish Chodesh Nisan became the Rish Hashanah Lamalachim. In other words, from this Hekish itself, there's something missing. There's still a piece of the puzzle missing. We have to wait for a later puzzle that will be introduced to Tavgim. 
However, I should say, the Rajba and the Ritva both say that this was not a question. Because it was Pashat for the Gemara that you don't try to make Rosh Hashanah in the middle of a month. To split a month into two years is not something you want to do, unless you have to. Therefore, it's much more logical that Rosh Hashanah should be the beginning of a month. Just like it's a new month, <coughs> it's a new year. In the middle of a month, to, so to speak, make a new year was something awkward. And therefore, even though it's a hekesh for Yitzis Mitzrayim, which was in the Sin Yitzis Mitzrayim, happened in the middle of the month. But when it comes to Rosh Hashanah and Malachim, they're going to choose the first day of the month. That's what the Rajb and the Ritva both explain. I'll call upon him. This is Rabbi Yochan and source that the first day of Nisan is Rosh Hashanah Lemalach. What do they do with Elonis? With Elonis? With trees? According to Beis Hillel. No, if there's no choice, there's no choice. We're going to see soon that according to Beis Hillel, yeah, there's no choice. L'mashal Rosh Hashanah L'Regalim. I can't make Rosh Hashanah L'Regalim. Rosh Hashanah L'Regalim. Right? But Chamish uh, Asa B'Shvat, I have no choice. We'll see why. Beis Hillel felt, this is it. If this is it, this is it. When we are creating it, right, we are creating it. Rosh Hashanah L'Malachim is a, is so to speak, it's, it's, it's an artificial day, meaning it's not that something happened, Rosh Hashanah It's a day that we're deciding. So it's Geshmak, it's making the beginning of a month. The real Rosh Hashanah, our Rosh Hashanah. I wanted no. to say the real Rosh Hashanah, but uh, <laughs> it's not fair to learn this mission and say the real Rosh Hashanah. No, Rosh Hashanah Legalim is Tesvav. We'll see. The Gemara is going to say this, yeah. but according to the Mishnah, it, it seems like, yeah, but, but, but Rashi right away said that Rosh Hashanah Legalim is Fadish B'Gemara. There was yeah. a reason Rashi said that. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a reason Rashi said it, because first of all, you have to know what Rosh Hashanah Legalim means, what, what's mm-hmm. bothering you. So it's going to be in Davdala, the next piece. Okay. So now let's go back. <coughs> so Rabbi Yochanan finished his proof. So the Gemara now comes to the next piece after Rabbi Yochanan's statement. Rabbi Yochanan finishes my Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim Minisin, Af Malchus Shleim Minisin. Yeah, the line starts Minisin. You see in the middle of the page, probably, I don't know, 10, 12 lines from the bottom. Vreg the Gemara, the Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim Gufa Minolan, the Minisin Manina. Rabbi Yochanan just established that you count Malachim like you count Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. How do you know? that the anniversary of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim you count from Nisan. You may say Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim happened in Nisan. Maybe Dilma Mitishrei Manina. Maybe we start celebrating a new anniversary of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim for the month of Tishrei. Meaning, since Tishrei is Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah for what? L'shanim for years, not L'malachim, but for years, L'shmit and L'yavos. And the way we count Rosh Hashanah is that when we start counting a new year from creation of the world, when does Tavshin Ayin Zayin begin? Tav Shemayin Zayin could also begin in Nisan. There's no way of, uh, of you could make Rosh Hashanah any day. What's your new year? Okay, the question is going to be later when Adam Arishan was actually created. Right? If Adam Arishan was actually created in Tishrei on Rosh Hashanah, which is one view, so then I understand. The first year, the first year the, when he was created, he starts counting, so to speak. The next year is the second year. But the bottom line is, we create our years according to Tishrei. So maybe Yitzhiya Smitzayim follows the same Cheshbon, meaning... The Jews left Mitzrayim on Tesvav Nisan. But the next Rosh Chodesh Tishrei, they now said, it's the second, it's a new year. Just like by the Melech, no difference. Even though it's only six months from Tesvav Nisan, less than six months. Nonetheless, you call it the second year since Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. Because we don't follow the anniversary of the date, we follow the years. That would be a, that would be a, 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 a Geshmak HaHisaf. The Gemara says... That the Shibu, the subjugation of the Jewish people in Mitzrayim, ended already on Rosh Hashanah, before Tesvav Nisan. So in other words, it's a beginning, so to speak, of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. That would be an extra dosage, an extra Hisafa, Hisafa's Hamtaka, a sweetness in the question, why the count in Tishrei? Which one did the Bria have? There's going to be a big Machlaikas, if it was Rosh Chodesh Nisan or Rosh Chodesh Tishrei. That's going to be a big Sugya later. When Bria Asylum started. L'chayt of Bria Asylum started in this. Huh? Hayoim Har Asylum, yeah. Dilma Metishrei Maninon. Maybe that's Rosh Hashanah Litzias Mitzrayim. And if that's the case, then you have no proof of Malchus Shleimah. All the Pasuk did was, it compared the two. 480 years since the Exodus of Egypt, four years since Shleimah is Melucha. Okay. Maybe the Exodus of Egypt you count according to the Shoshana, the Shredish Tishrin, after Shredishness. If that's the case, 
should be. Echad betishrei. How do you know? We did Rabbi Yochanan get this. You want to bring a pasuk? The pasuk only proves to you. You compare the two. And by the way, there's a mile in this because if it would be tishrei, then the hekish would be complete. It would be the same day. You'd see a Mitzrayim and a verse we would begin Rosh Hashanah Echad to Tishrei, and Rosh Hashanah Malachim would be the same day. Unlike in Nissan, where you may be distinguishing between the two. You're saying Tesvav and Rosh Chodesh, perhaps. But the Hekish said the Chodesh Ziv. No, that's the month when it happened. Yeah, but when it happened in the month of the year, that we know. The count. The, the count of the year. Year could be Tov Shnai and Zion, Tov Shnai and Vav, Tov Shnai and Tess. <laughs> which year? Which year? So year of which year? He said, the second month. The second month, in the fourth year. Ziv, Ziv is Yah. Yeah. Then he must be uh, Nisan. When, when Shlomo Melech counted, how do you know that you have to compare? It says Mitzrayim and... Uh, and uh, Maybe the cutoff time was Rish Echad Tishrei, and from the first day of Tishrei is considered Shlomo's fourth year, and it goes through year. How do you know? How do you know the cutoff time was because Nisan? Said the second month. No. The second month cannot be Cheshvah and Kislev. Because said the no, the second month we're following always Nissan because the Torah calls Nissan the first month. Nobody argues with that. Torah calls Tishrei the seventh month and Nissan the first month. You're asking a good question. Why does Torah call Tishrei the seventh month and suddenly we're always counting Tishrei as the first month? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. But the bottom line, we'll discuss it. But the bottom line is Nissan is says, the Torah clearly says, is always the first month. It's a pasuk in Boi, Risha in Hu Lachem, Lachaydish Hashanah, Chaydish Hazeh, and it was obvious Nissan because it was, he said in two weeks, we're going to go out of Mitzrayim, which happens in Nissan. So, Chaydish Hazeh Lachem, Risha Lachem is Nissan. So, the months, Nissan is always the first month. Ada Yoimazeh, you say Chaydish Harishan, it's Chaydish Nissan. Even though in our vocabulary we call the first month Tishrei, or some people call it January, but whatever the case, in the Torah's Cheshbon, Nissan is the first month. You understand? So, Ziv is the second month, but which year of the second month? It could be the anniversary was Rosh Chodesh Nissan. So Shleim, so to speak, his fourth year began just one month ago. Or maybe his fourth year began seven months ago in Tishrei. Maybe. And for the Gemara, Loi Salkadaitach. This should not go up in your mind. The word Salkadaitach, Stam, it's good to translate. Daitach means your mind. Salka means go up. Loi Salkadaitach. This should not be entertained by your mind. This should not go up in your mind. This svara doesn't make sense. Don't not entertain it. Why? Why not? The Ksiv, there's a Pasuk, and this describes the passing of Aaron Hakayan in Parshas Chukas. Right? In Parshas Chukas. <coughs> Aaron Hakayan passes away, Zakta Teir. Vayal Aaron Hakayan el hoir hohor al pi Hashem. Aaron Hakayan ascends the double mountain called hoir hohor by the mouth, by the commandment of Hashem. Vayom Hashem. He passes away there by Shnasar Boyim, let's say it's B'nai Yisrael, Meretz Mitzrayim. On the 40th year since the Jewish people left Mitzrayim, B'chaydash HaChamishi, B'echad L'chaydash. In the fifth month, on the first day of the month. Aaron HaKoyin, Sptira, says explicitly, it was Rosh Chaydash of, Nisan Iyer, Sivan Tammuz of is the fifth month. The first day of the fifth month, the first day of of, that is when Aaron HaKoyin passes away. What is unique here? That the Torah identifies the year. It was the 40th year since Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. From here we don't have a proof yet, because this doesn't mean that the 40th year didn't begin in Tishrei. Mm -hmm. right. Or the 39th year, did it, that we don't have a proof. However, there's another pasuk, Uksiv. If you go a few parashiyas later, you come to the beginning of Sefer Dvarim. Sefer Dvarim says, Eila HaDvarim HaShadibre Moshe. These are the words that Moshe speaks. Mm -hmm. And the Torah says, When? <coughs> on the 40th year, uh, 40 years, it happened in 40 years, on the 11th month, the first day of the month, Moshe speaks to the Jewish people, and he basically reviews with them the primary messages of Torah, which we call Mishnah Torah Sefer Dvarim, and it's a long sermon or presentation that's going to continue Dvarim Veschan and Ekev Rei Shoftim Kiseitze Kisavoy Nitzavim, and then the description of the last day or days of Moshe Rabbeinu's life and the last three parshas. So this is Moshe's final speech, so to speak, to Klal Yisrael, which begins when forty years Rosh Chodesh Shvat. Now. Since the Pasuk describing the death of Aaron happens in the month of Av, clearly it says it was the fifth, the fifth month of Nisan, and it's called Shnasar Boyim, clearly, 
then you speak about Moshe's presentation to the Jewish people, and suddenly you went to Shvat, which is the 11th month since Nisan, and you also call it Vakari Lishnas Harboyim. You call it Shnas Harboyim. Miklau, the Rosh Hashanah Lav Tishrehu. Obviously, the Rosh Hashanah for the count of years since Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim is not Tishrei. Why? Because if Tishrei would be cut off time, then Shvat would be a new year of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. Shvat would be a new year. Of would be year 40, and it clearly says it was Shnas Harboyim. Rosh Hashanah, Echa Tishrei would be year 41. So you can't say that in Shvat, which is months later, and after Echad Betishrei, it's the same, Arboyim, it's the same 40th year, it's the 41st year. It could be Yadva. Huh? It could be Yadva. It could be the 12th month, could be that the turnover doesn't have You mean not Tishrei? Right. Yeah. Right. Here we're just rejecting the idea that it was Tishrei. It can't be Tishrei, even though Tishrei might make sense because it's a new year, and maybe that's when you count the anniversary. And we added, like you added, the Shoshana is the time that the Shibud ended, so so to speak, Yitzhiz Mitzrayim began on some level in Tishrei, but you can't say that because the Torah clearly says that Av and Shvat are in the same year, both the 40th year of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim. This means that it didn't happen Tishrei. So we go back to Rabbi Yochan and you say the anniversary is Nisan, so therefore, Av is the 40th year, and Shvat is still the 40th year. Nissan would be year 41. Do we have to prove, have to prove that the story of Aaron didn't happen after the Mishnah Good question. Good, good question. Unless you want to say, who said that Av came before Shvat? Maybe Shvat came before Av. In other words, Rosh Hashanah, Echad, Betishrei, is a new anniversary? It would be 41. Huh? It would be 41. Maybe at the first. No, it would be 41. You can't add another year. Abayim is Abayim. No, our boyim, but the Shvat is first in the Arboyim before of. That's what he's asking. So we'll see you in a moment. You got to of what you was of. If the Shvat was first, when you hit Shvat, you're 40. Now you're in 40. Right, no, you, you topsy turvy it. You, you convert it. You started with Tishrei. We're assuming, rightfully, that uh, the story of Aaron happened before the story of Moshe. Also, in the Seder, one is in Parshas Chukas. Aaron passes away in Parshas Chukas. Rishchaydish of. It's like right, and then and then in Dvarim we're doing a later date, so we can't say that the month of Tishrei c- made a cutoff time, because then Shvat would not be called Arboyim. You want to suggest a whole different thing? They could both be called Shnas Arboyim, and Tishrei is cutoff time. Tishrei is the anniversary, but the story of Shvat came before the story of. The Gemara is going to discuss it soon. He wants to suggest why are we so certain? I mean, that's how that's how we learn the Pashtus this and this. Where, where are you starting from? That Dvarim happened before Chukas. Based on Ein Mukhtam Amor. Dvarim happened before Chukas. Not Mrs. Moshe. No, yes. 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 Yeah, that not. That's Kukhav Shalim. Yeah, yeah, no, you, you're going to be changing the whole history. Because the way we understand it now is Rishchai Dishmat Moshe speaks, and, and five weeks later he passes away. Zion Adr, he passes away. Again, there's no date for that in the Torah. This is how the Gemara learns it out. It's also in the... It's, a, it's another sugya. But the point here is that it was the last weeks before he passed away. If we're changing the order, obviously we have to have a whole different cheshbon. Because Moshe Rabbeinu passes away after Aaron, that's clear. He's the you one... Have to be also, you have to be careful not to go over 40. Right. Be very careful. Whatever you're doing, you go over 40, because that's finite. Yes, <coughs> yes. It's <coughs> finite because Moshe Rabbeinu, it says, was 80 years old when he stood before Pare. It says he was Medmeyev Esrim, 120 when he passed away. Between 80 and 120, you can't get more than 40 years, right? So you can't add a whole other year. Okay. So Bemela, we have to say, according to this Cheshba now, that Rosh Hashanah is not the cutoff time for Yitzhi Yismachai, meaning Echad B'Tishrei, and that's why Av and Shvat are in the same year. Because if it would be, then Av would have to be, a Shvat would have to be a new year, 41. year 41. Now there are those who ask here, how could you make 41? Moshe Rabbeinu was 80, he passed away 120. There's no 41 years since Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. But of course, it doesn't mean 41 years <coughs> since Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. It means within Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim, after six months, it's already a new year. We're saying that the new year is not a new year in terms of 12 months. It's a new year after less than five and a half months. It's already a new year. Make a new year after one day. Right. So, so the new year doesn't mean it's a whole new 41 year. And Moshe Rabbeinu passed away at the end of 41 years. There were no 41 years. It's 40 years. But in the 40th year, you could split it up. And after Tishri, you're calling it year 41 since Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. 
even if Moshe Rabbeinu passes away that year, which is Zion other. So technically it's 40 years in terms of 12 months. In terms of the anniversaries, how you're counting it, it would be year 41. So therefore, Miklal de Rosh Hashanah lav Tishrehu. It's clear that Rosh Hashanah is not on Tishrei. So the Gemara says, one second. It's not, not so clear. The first time when Aaron passes away, it says, Vayamaz sham b'shnasa harboyim l'tzeiz b'nei Yisrael me'eretz Mitzrayim. In Chodesh Shvat, it just says, Vayhi barboyim shana. It doesn't say harboyim shana to what? Frag the Gemara, Bishle mehe'ech. Mele, this one, the first Pasuk, by the death of Aaron, Mephadish l'tzeiz Mitzrayim. He says it's clearly the 40th year since the exodus of Egypt. Elahai, but the second Pasuk about Moshe's presentation in the month of Shvat, Mimaydi l'tzeiz Mitzrayim. How do you know the amount of years is Tzitzis Mitzrayim? Dilmala kamas ha-mishkan. Maybe it's considered Shnasi, he's counting Shnasa Arboyim since the construction of the Mishkan. And when did the construction of the Mishkan happen? Let's remember. The Jewish people left Mitzrayim on Tesvav Nisan. A few weeks later, seven weeks later, was Matan Torah. After Matan Torah, they create a golden calf. After the golden calf, Moshe Rabbeinu comes down and tells them to build a Mishkan. It takes some time to build a Mishkan. The next year, Rish Chodesh Nisan, they erect a Mishkan. So when does the Mishkan happen? Rish Chodesh Nisan, that's already the second year of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. So maybe when the Torah says that Moshe spoke to the Jews in the Shvat of 40th year, it's 40th year since HaKama Asam Mishkan, not Yitzhak Mitzrayim. And therefore you could, Ibe'emes, the first day of Tishrei is cut off time. Really, Yitzhak Mitzrayim's anniversary is counted from Tishrei. And therefore, Echad B'Tishri would be considered a new year. So why doesn't the Torah say year 41? It should say year 41 because Shvat comes after Tishri. The answer is, you're right. If it would say Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, it would say year 41. It says our Bayim Shana because we're talking about Lakamas HaMishkan, which happened only in the second year. So the Torah is not talking about the same time, the same time Cheshben in the first Pasuk of Av and the second Pasuk of Shvat. And for the Gemara... Could the Amar Rav Pop? On this, we're going to use a teaching of Rav Pop. Rav Pop is going to speak mamish later on Dav Gimel. It's going to be a sugi, but he's just referencing the idea of Rav Pop. There's a pasuk in the Chemya, Vayihi bechaydish kislev shnas esrim. I'm saying the full pasuk. It happened in the month of kislev shnas esrim, but it doesn't say esrim of what year twenty. There's another pasuk in the Chemya earlier, which says Vayihi bechaydish nisan shnas esrim. It says the year 20 from the anniversary of the reign of the king Artach Shasta. So the Papa says, Shnas Esrim, Shnas Esrim, Shav. Since it says Shnas Esrim in one and Shnas Esrim in the other one, we compare the two. And therefore, just like in one case, Shnas Esrim says clearly this 20th anniversary of the king Artach Shasta, the second time it says Shnas Esrim, after that in Nehemia, we say it's the same Shnas Esrim. Hachinami will use the idea of Rav Papa, Shnas Arboyim, Shnas Arboyim, Lekzei Rishava. Makan, just like by the passing of Arnit Litzias Mitzrayim, Afkan Litzias Mitzrayim. And that's a good proof to say that the Arboyim Shon is not for Akamas HaMishkan, it's for Yitzias Mitzrayim. If that's the case, we're back to our proof that the month of Tishrei is not the time that you celebrate a new anniversary for Yitzias Mitzrayim. Frag the Gemara, your question, Umeimai de Maise de Av Kodim, Dilma Maise de Shvat Kodim. How do you know that the story of the month of, of the passing of Aaron preceded Kadim? It preceded Moshe Rabbeinu's presentation in Shvat. Maybe the story of Shvat happened first. In other words, Moshe Rabbeinu speaks on Rishchei de Shvat on the 40th year since Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. And then Aaron passes away afterwards in the month of Av, in the same 40th year of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. And when was the anniversary? Rishchei de Tishrei. And that's why it's both in the 40th year. And we're no, we have no proof to say that the anniversary of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim is Nisan. And therefore the Shoshan al-Malachim is Nisan. And therefore the Yochanan's proof is rejected. How do you know it happened this way? Maybe it did not happen this order. I in Torah, no question, Parshas Chukas comes before Parshas Dvarim. But we're going to introduce the concept of Ein Muktam Amulchem B'Torah sometimes. The Torah was not written in a chrono, not always, but sometimes the Torah was not written in a chronological order. So therefore, we're going to have to say that maybe, maybe, of came after Shvat, and for the Gemara, loy salka daitach. Again, this should not be entertained. Why not? Why not? The same words the Gemara used the first time. Loy salka he uses again. Don't bring this up on your mind. Why? 
Because read the context. <laughs> the Ksiv, when Moshe Rabbeinu speaks to the Jewish people, it says one more simon. It was the Shvat. It was the first day of Shvat. It was the 40th year. And then it says, Acherei <laughs> HaKoysoi Esichon. The next post says, Acherei HaKoysoi Esichon Melech HaMoyri Asher Yoshev Becheshbun Ves Oig Melech HaBoshon Asher Yoshev Ba'ashtodiz Be'adrei. Moshe Rabbeinu's presentation comes after he smites, after he fights Sichon, the king of Emery, and Oig, the king of Basha, which is a war that's described earlier at the end of Parshas Chukas, that Sichon and Oig came both to fight and exterminate the Jewish people, and Jews went to war and uh, successfully triumphed. So clearly Moshe's speech happens after that. If that's the case, V'chinoch Adin. When Aaron passes away, Akati have a Sichin Kaya. Sichin still existed. So you can't say that the story of Aaron happened after Moshe's Shvat, Moshe's speech, when Moshe did it after Sichin was, was defeated, and Aaron, right, passed away later. It doesn't make sense. Because when Aaron passes away, Sichin is alive, so it can't happen. So you have to say Aaron's passing happened months before Moshe Rabbeinu's presentation, Moshe Rabbeinu's Teichicha to the Jewish people. So therefore your whole Cheshman doesn't make sense. If that's the case, you can't say the first day of Tishrei is the anniversary of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim, because then Arboyim Shon of Moshe's Teichicha had to be Arboyim Ve'echad, 41. What's the proof that Sichon was alive? Maybe Sichon was not alive when Aaron passed away. The Ksiv, because there's a Pasuk, right after Aaron passes away, the Pasuk says, Vayishma HaKnani Melech Arod Yoshev Hanegev ki bo Yisrael derech ha'asorim vayilochem bi Yisrael vayesh bi menu shevi. The Knani, the king of Arad, heard that the Jewish people arrived in the path of the Asarim and he goes and he declares a war. Now the question is, who is Melech Arad? Who is this king of Arad? That's going to be the question now. But before that, the Gemara analyzes how you know this Pasuk has to do with the death of Arad. The Chachamim said, Mashmu Hashama. What did he hear? It says, Vayishma Haknani Melech You could say he heard that the Jewish people arrived. So he decided to declare war. The Jewish people were journeying. He had to hear something that gave him the, the confidence, the courage, the oomph to go declare war. Mashmu Hashama. Shama Shameis Ar. So Chazal explained this juxtaposition, the smichas of the Psukim, that this is described after the passing of Aaron. He heard that Aaron passed away. Vayishma means he heard something. What did he hear? What, how did that help him? As we remember, when the Jewish people were traveling in the Midbar, they had the six clouds surrounding them from all four sides, plus on top, plus on bottom, guiding them. And there was a seventh cloud ahead of them, guiding the way, showing the way. And when Aaron passes away, all the clouds of glory are gone. So Melech Harad believes, now he has permission to fight the Jewish people successfully. This is the meaning of the Pasuk, right before the story, that after Aaron passes away, the entire community saw that Aaron passed away. Now, what's the problem with this Pasuk? They didn't see it. Because he took my Aaron up to her hahar and it was done in private. So you could say, Vayiru doesn't mean they saw that Aaron passed away. They saw, so to speak, the results of it. They saw the consequences of it. They saw maybe what Moshe Rabbeinu looked like, what, what Allah looked like. But Rebbe Bohu says, you have to touch different. Remember in the Sefer Torah, there's no Nekudas. There's no vows. Don't pronounce it, Vayiru, they saw. You can pronounce it in a different Nekudah, in a different pronunciation. Vayero, meaning not they saw, but they were seen. They were revealed. Why were they revealed? They were exposed because the clouds departed. Vayero, ukadresh lakish. But here we have a problem. What's the key? If you say, Vayero kolei dekigava Aaron, they saw that Aaron passed away. So key is that. If you say, Vayero kol ha'eda, the whole community got exposed. Why? Ki Gava Aaron. What's the Ki Gava Aaron? What is the Ki that Gava Aaron? So he says, Ukadir Reshlakish. Here we're going to introduce the teaching of Reshlakish. Dhamma Reshlakish. And anybody who learns Chumash with Rashi knows how many times <coughs> Rashi brings this. Ki Meshamish Ba'arbal Ashaynas. In Torah, when you have the word Ki, it's used in four different contexts, four different functions. Sometimes E. Sometimes E, which means if, 
or as we'll see in Ashi, when. Sometimes Dilma, maybe. Sometimes Ella, only, and sometimes, and that's relevant here, Daha, because. If this is the case, Al Tikri Vayiru Ella Vayiro, Vayiro, Kola Eida, you know why? Ki, Daha, because. Not that. If you say Vayiru means they saw Vayiru, they saw Ki Gava Aaron. That Aaron passed away. Here we're going to say Vayiro, they appeared, they were exposed, Ki Gava Aaron. Because Aaron passed away. And the Anani HaKovet departed and therefore the Knani Melech Harod, felt he can fight the Jewish people. So the Gemara asks a question. Me, dummy, what, what's your shaykh here? What's your comparison? Hasam Knan HaChasicha. Clearly Knani Melech Harod was alive when Aaron passed away and he came to fight. Here we're talking about Sicha, not Knani. It says the Vayishma Knani. You're telling me that Sicha was alive when Aaron passed away. And that's why he came to fight. And that's why the Jews fought him. And that has, and Moshe Rabbeinu spoke after Sichem was defeated. So it can't be before of. It's a separate story. This is Sichem, this is Knan. And for the Gemara, no. We have a brais about this. Tana, we have a brais. Who Sichem, who Arad, who Knan. The Knani, Melech Arad, is the same person like Sichem. So why do you have all these names? The names are not accurate descriptions. They describe different features. He was called Sichon Shadoim al Midbar because he was compared to a Siach. A Siach is a uh, fast horse in the desert that runs extremely fast. One of those horses that is extraordinarily swift. Knan, he was called Al Shem Al because of his Malchus, because his inhabitants, many of his citizens, came from Knan. Umashmoi, and what was his personal name? His personal name was Arachmoi. His personal name was Arat. Ikadamni, there's another Brice, another version. Arad, he was called Arad Shadoim al Arad Bamidbar. This was his nickname because he was like a wild donkey in the desert in terms of his strength. Knan al Shem al Chusi, that remains the same because his inhabitants were from Knan. Umashmoi, and his private name was Sichen Shmoi. The difference is either his private name was Arad and Sichen was his nickname because he was so fast on his legs. Or his private name was Sichain, and his nickname was Arai because he was so strong like the wild donkey. So the real question is if he was known because of his, because of his ability to run or he was known because of his prowess, his donkey-like abilities. But in the both situations, Knani Melech Harod was seen by tradition as Sichain, and he was obviously alive when Aaron passed away, because only after Aaron's passing does he have the courage to declare war, and this means that Moshe's speech, which happens after Sichain was defeated, must have been after the story of Aaron, and it would make sense that Av came before Shvat, both are in the same 40th year, which means the first day of Tishrei is not a Rosh Hashanah for Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, and therefore Rabbi Yochanan is right when he maintains that the anniversary of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim would be Nisan, certainly not Tishrei, and Rosh Hashanah Lamalachim is compared to Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, so we're back to that situation. Let's see Rashi, Kedirei Shlakish, top of the Avgimel Amad Aleph, Elav Ayiroz, Akrashin Izgalu, and here we have the teaching of Rish Lakish, Kedir Rish Lakish. You see the second Rashi on top, Tav Gimel Amad Aleph. So Rashi explains here the full shyness of, of Ki. Nesinus Tam Ki Gava Aaron. Kedir Rish Lakish. Ki Gava and Nesinus Tam will adabar shalafonov. The word Ki Gava is a reason. Nesinus Tam, it's a reason. Meaning, Nesgalu Ha'eda Lefisha Gava Aaron. Why are they exposed? Because Aaron passed away, so there's no clouds protecting them. So Rashi Shaloshin Ki Barba Lashonis Mashamish Bemikra. The term ki has four different usages in the Tanakh. Pa'amim Baba Makim Im. Sometimes it's in lieu of an im, if. Pa'amim Baba Makim Dilma, Shema, maybe. Pa'amim Baba Makim Daha, meaning because. Shinois and Tamla Dover. U Pa'amim Baba Makim Ella, only the Sosis at Dibur Shalafanam. Ella means it's not like you thought before. Ella, only this way. In other words, you're contradicting your previous statement. That's what key is. Key is a contrast. Rashi starts giving examples. Kiyya lahem davar. Ah, yeah. Kiyya lahem davar. Boy, which This is in Yisrael. Yisrael asks Moshe, "What do you sit here a whole day yourself?" So he says, "Kiyya lahem davar." When they have a problem, they come to me. Or we have kisivga shoyrei vecha. When you encounter the shirt of your enemy, we have ki yikari kan sipper lefanechin ki seitze. You encounter a nest of birds. This is the mitzvah shiluch hakam. Kulam loshin imheim. 
It's all in, if this will happen. Ki ikari concept, it doesn't mean because you met a nest. It doesn't mean because you meet a nest. It means only if you met a nest. It means key. if. If you'll meet a nest. If people come to me. If you'll meet a bull. Oib. Oib. Im is oib. Next. Ki savayu ala aretz. Doesn't mean because you came to the land or maybe you'll come. Ki savayu ala aretz means when you'll come to the land. It's like we'll say kasher tavayu. So im here means oib and it also means if. If would be right. Im if. It also means when. The next is ki selechon. When you leave Yitzchayim lo selchu reikam. Again, it means when. Or ki sechala laaser. When you finish giving maaser. Parshas ki savoy. Or ki sisa esroj bnei Yisrael. When you'll count the Jewish people. Here it's not if. It's not if. It's when it will happen. V'kol hamashamshin b'mokem ka'asher. It would be like it would say ka'asher when. Or b'mokem asher kula moshin imhe. What's bothering Rashi is first you say im and now you're giving me a fifth one. So he said it's all im. Im in Lashon Kaidish means if, it also means when. Kasha. Shematsinu bekama mekoimus. I'm not going to add a fifth idea and say it means kasha. Shematsinu bekama mekoimus. Im mishamish Lashon kasha. Velashon asha. Because we see that im could mean if, right? But im can also mean when. Kimoi. Im yiyah yoival. If yoival comes. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Yoival is coming. The clock moves. It would be very nice if you can stop time, but it doesn't work that way. Yoival is coming. Or the next one. If you're going to be makir of minchas bikurim, you have to be makir of minchas bikurim. If you're going to lend money to a poor man, it's not an if, it's an obligation. It's an obligation. Kamilus chasadim is an obligation. A Jew is obligated to help a poor man. So what's im kesef talva? It doesn't mean if, it means when. When you lend money to a poor man, these and these are the halachas. Another one is im yiv le'enum im koimay amedaber b'shalvas rishayim, when he will be swallowed up in his space. Speaking about the serenity of the wicked. So we're done with the first one. He is im and ka'asher, which means if or when. Ki yikari kansipu lefanecha doesn't mean when you will see a nest, if you will see a nest. Ki savoyu ala aretz means when you will come to the land. Next, Dilma, maybe. Kigoyin, ki soymar belevavcha rabim hagoyim ha'elam mi meni. It's not when or if, it's perhaps. Shema toymar rabim hagoyim ha'elam, loy soymar ken, loy sirem ha'elam. Next, ki soymru man nirdaf loy. When you'll ask, when you might ask, why should we pursue him? In the laws of Shemitah, Parshas Bahar, you might say, what are we going to eat on the seventh year? We're not planting, we're not harvesting. You might see the donkey of your enemy and you won't want to help him. He is perhaps, maybe. Next. Kisira you might or when? Kisira Well, the Posse continues with a question. Kisira Chamar Senacha, Reuvitz Tachas Masoi, Vechadalta Mea Zoivloi, Azoiv Tazoiv Imoi. So it's like the Torah is staging a question. Next, we have Vatechachish Sara Lamer, Loit Sachakti Ki Areya. Sara said, I didn't laugh because she was afraid. It's not perhaps she was afraid, it's not when she was afraid. Daha, Hareza Lashen Daha, Lefisha Yereya. Vayoymer Loi, Kitzachakt, Hareza Lashen Ella. So in the same Pasuk, you have two different types of keys. When it says she denied her laughter, Ki Areya, it's because she was afraid. Vayoymer Avram said, Loi, Kitzachakt. Ella, you did laugh. Loy, it's not true you didn't laugh. Kitzachak, you did laugh. Ella. Next, here. Kigova Aden. Kshata Koyri Vayiro. What is a Lashon Daha? If you would say Vayiru, Kigova Aaron, what it would mean? Vayiru, they saw that Aaron passed away, right? Asher Gova Aaron. So you would have Ki then, as in that. Just like you can have if and when, you can have that. But now Vayiro would be because Gova Aaron. And the next is Hoidu Lashem 
Kitov. What's the Kitov? <coughs> Thank <coughs> Hashem because he is good. Kitov. Kili Yolam Chazda. Shaharei Toiv. How does that hold? You know, I always like to use that. Altikri this, Ella this. When we sit and read the Torah, we sit in the Shabbos, it doesn't make a difference where you're from. You say <coughs> Ashkenazi, Chassidish, Lukish. What do you mean Altikri? This is the way we read it. What's the... This is Lamaisa. Altikri this, Ella this. Well, we don't read it that way. This is the way we actually read it. Right, so... So what do you mean Altikri? Yeah, so that's what the Gemara in Sukkah there's Yesh Em Lemesoyrus and Yesh Em Mikra, meaning there is the way we were taught how to pronounce the words which Moshe Rabbeinu had to teach us because you could read a lot of words uh, in different ways as we know right? Loisevashal Gdi Bachalev Imoy, maybe it's Bechalev Imoy No, this is very serious, you're not allowed to cook meat, goat, in the fat of its mother. You're allowed to eat meat and milk. Who said not? You decided, Bachalev. Bechalev is the same spelling. There's no Nekudus in the Sefer Torah. So that means Torah had to be given with an oral shear. That's what the Rambam <coughs> says, Torah befirusha nitna. It's like it's like the over there also. It's, it's exactly. Like However, how do you know uh, which uh, one comes? So we know yeah, what this pronunciation is. Yes. Right, right. So we know pronunciation. You have Besukos, Teish, Vushiv, Asyamim, right? Could you read Besukas, Besukos, etc. But since it was written in a way that it lends itself to be read in a different way, so that itself is seen as significant. So when we say Al Tikri, it doesn't mean don't read it that way. The Shalos says, what it means is, don't only read it that way. Of course you should also read it that way. So Marshal Al Tikri, we say in the morning, Al Tikri Halochas El Halochas. He doesn't mean don't say Kol Ashoyna Halochas. No, don't say say Kol Ashoyna Halichas. You should say Kol Al Tikri means don't limit yourself to the one pronunciation because since the word can be pronounced in a different way, it means it has other layers of meaning and significance. But it doesn't negate the first one. So that's why whenever it could be pronounced in a different way, even though we don't. But it may have certain significance, like other well, it things. Does. Like, yeah, the marshal, how many walls a sukkah has to have? Since it says without a vav, even though you read it by sukkahs, you say it's only one wall, it's not two walls, or whatever the case is. It leaves the tight especially, did it in a way that it lends itself another layer, another layer of interpretation. So Rashi says, What's key? Ella pasoyach tiftach. Ella. Don't close your hand, open your hand. If, in, in this case, key would mean, would mean because. Okay. So this is a long Rashi. He gives an example for the key Meshamers Barbala Shaynas. So Rashi, Syoch, Ayer ben Sus. It's a young horse. Ayer is a young horse. Aroit is Chamer Habar. It's the outside, wild, tremendously wild and strong donkey. Zakdi Gemara Vaite. One second. You didn't solve the problem. <laughs> you learn from here how to dissect something. Nothing is taken for granted. There's no such a thing. <laughs> Why does a pasuk? No, maybe Tishrei, not Tishrei, fine. I didn't give up yet. Maybe ear. Maybe the anniversary of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim has to be ear. And then you don't have a question because then Av and Shvat are both in the 40th year. But then Rosh Hashanah Lamalachim shouldn't be Nisan, it should be Rosh Hashanah year. Aaron passed away in Av, in the 40th year. What? No. No, Rosh Hashanah of the anniversary of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. When do we celebrate a new anniversary for Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim? Rosh Chodesh year. In other words, Jews left Tesvav Nisan. The end of that <coughs> month was anniversary number one, Rosh Chodesh year. This is the second year. We celebrate Rosh Chodesh year, the first full month after Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. This is the anniversary. So, the Gemara Eloi Sal Kedaitach. This is again... Huh? You want to know why not Sivan? And why not Tammuz? Right? You can't be of. Of, of we're good, okay. right? Yeah. Of we're good. Tishrei we excluded. Ames? Cheshvan we excluded. Kislev we excluded. Tevis we excluded. Shvat we excluded. Because we need of and Shvat to be in the same year. Right? So, right. right? so that we excluded. Huh? Of the others covered. Right. El, Elul. From Nisan, you have a problem to Av. You can huh? From Nisan to Av, you have, you have question. 
Right. Okay, any Rosh Chodesh. Yeah, so Nisan would be good. That's what Rabbi Yechina believed. But now we have a problem with Iyer. We have a problem with Sivan. Sivan. Yeah. Okay. It's a bislach. Don't worry. The Gemara, the Gemara is going to be consistent. Yeah, of the other should be covered. Or else you're going to again jump to 41. It has to be covered. Right. Yeah. Right. But Lechayda, maybe the Shun is here. So he says, Loi Sokadai. This is again, not a thought. It shouldn't come up. Why? For this, we have a Pasuk. This is the Pasuk in Parshish Pekudai. At the end of Sefer Shmois. The <coughs> Chodesh tradition that happened in the first month, Bashana Hashemis, in the second year, of course, since Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Be'echad Lachodesh on the first day of the month, which means Rosh Chodesh Nisan, Hukam HaMishkan, the Mishkan comes, stands up. A year after Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, minus 15 days, the Mishkan was put up. That's why it's called Bashana Hashemis, the second year. Bashana Hashemis, the second year. Uksiv, we have another Pasik in Parshas Bahaloischa. Vayihi Bashana Hashemis, in the second year since Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim, Bachoydesh Hasheni, the second month year, Nale Ha'onon Me'al Mishkan Eidus, on the 20th day of the month of the year, the cloud finally went up from the Mishkan, and it signaled that it's time to travel, and the Jews began traveling. In other words, the Jews remained in one place for a very long time. They came to Rishchoydesh Sivan, six weeks after Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim, to Bidbar Sinai, to Har Sinai, and they stayed there for Matan Torah, they built an eagle there, they built a Mishkan there, they put up a Mishkan there. Chaf Ir, a month and 20 days <coughs> after the putting up of the Mishkan, it was time to move on. Chafir, they begin their new journeys, and that's what you have, the stories of Parshas Baloischa, and the story of Shlach, and the story of Kairach, which all happens in the month of Ir and Sivan that year, the 29th of Sivan, uh, the Meraglam Ascent, they come back on Tisha B'av. that's all after this 20th day of Ir. Midikai ben Nisan, now let's think about this. The Mishkan was put up in this, and he calls it Shainis. Clearly it says, Now, A month later, If Rosh Hashanah of Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim was Rosh Chodesh year, so then you can't, Rosh Chodesh should be the second year, right? It should be the second year. Why? Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim happened to Svav Nisan. Fifteen days later, Rosh Chodesh year is the second year. The next Rishchaydish Nisan is the second year, but Rishchaydish year is Shana Hashlish, the third year. You can't have them both. Miklad Rish Hashanah Lav Iyerhu. And if this is the case, obviously Rishchaydish year is off the charts. It's not here anymore. Flek de Gemara, okay. Ve'em Rish Hashanah Sivan. Let it be Sivan. Let it be Sivan. What would be the Svarah to celebrate the anniversary of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim in Sivan? Tishrei we spoke about. Iyer is the first month after Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. Sivan, oh, Sivan is the month of Matan Taira. That is what the purpose of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim was. By Yitzhiyah Chasam and Mitzrayim, Tavdana Salakim al Harazah, maybe till the month of Sivan, you didn't really have a Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. That's why the only holiday in the Jewish calendar that doesn't have a date is Shavuos. Every other Yom Tov has a date Pesach, Sukkot, Chanukah, Purim, Shoshana, Yom Kippur. Besides Shavuos, the Gemara says Shavuos could be Hey Sivan, Vav Sivan. Zion Sivan, why? Shavuos is never a date. Shavuos is the 50th day since Pesach. Pesach. After you count 49 days, Svir Sa'imah, the 50th day is Shavuos. No, if Nisan has, if Rishchei Deshir has two days, right? If Rishchei Deshir has two days, Rishchei Sivan has two days, so then your 50, 50 days go backwards. So already, hey, here, you have Shavuos. On the other hand, if Rishchei Deshir is Chaser, right? Then you have to wait an extra day. So Zion Sivan. And this has a lot of ramifications, I and mean, we'll get to the sugya for those who taina that if you cross the international date line, and therefore you're missing a day of Sviras Ha'imer, <coughs> so you don't have 49 days, perhaps your Shavuos has to be a later day. Okay, this is a very debatable hot topic, we'll get to it on Daf Ches. But the point is that Shavuos doesn't have a date. Why it doesn't have a date? The answer is because the celebration of Shavuos is the completion of Pesach. Without Matan Torah, there's no Pesach. Why? You can give people liberty, but you have to give them a mission, what to do with the freedom. If you don't give them a mission, what to do with the freedom, you could scream, let freedom ring, but what do they do with the freedom? So that's why Shavuos is the culmination of Pesach. So perhaps you celebrate Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim Zer Shoshana only on Sivim. So the Gemara Lois Al No. Why? The Ksiv, it says, when they come to Har Sinai, Parshas Yisra. On the third month since they left Eretz Mitzrayim. No. If it's true that Rish Chodesh Sivan was a new anniversary, 
it should have said, Bachoidish Ashlishi Bashana Hashainis, let's say Bnei Yisrael, let's say Bnei Yisrael, there was a new year. It says, Bachoidish Ashlishi, let's say Bnei Yisrael. They left Nisan. Two months later, on the third month, they come to, they come to Bahar Sina. But you just told me the Shchedish Sivan was a cutoff day. There was a new anniversary. So it has to be by Chedish Hashlishi, Bashana Hashainis, let's say, Bnei Yisrael, Meretz Mitzrayim. From the Pasuk, it's clear that it's all in the same year. It's all in the first year. So this is gone. Okay, the of Eimah Tamus? So Zayn Tamus? Maybe Tamus. Next, Ema of? Maybe of? Remember, it could still be Rish Chodesh of. Why? Because if Rish Hashanah of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim is Rish Chodesh of, so then Av and Shvat are all in the new year. No problem. It's fine. And next, Ve'ema other can also be other. As long as Shvat and Av are together, we're good. But other could be a new anniversary. So you're not, you don't know about these months, and you don't have, so, so therefore the Bioichanon's uh, uh, proof is rejected. You don't know that it's Nisan. No, we, we didn't, because it can't be, we're done with Elo, Tishrei, Cheshven, Kislev, Tevis, Shvat. That you can't ask. Right, okay. Because it has to be, be Ov and Shvat have to be in the same year. So those months, from Elo through Shvat, you're good. Right? We also got, we got rid of the problem of Iyer, and we got rid of the problem of, of, of Sivan. Nisan is what Rabbi Yochanan wants us to believe. That's what the Mishnah says. We're still left with the problem of Tammuz, of and other. So the Gemara, you're right. Ella Omar Rebbe Loza Mehach. Rebbe Loza says, I disagree with Rabbi Yochanan. The source that Rosh Hashanah Lamalachim is the first of Nisan is not from the Pasuk by Shloyme that he built the first Beis Samikdash on the second month, 480 years after Yitzhak Mitzrayim <coughs> on the fourth year, year of his reign. It's a different Pasuk, also about the same story, interestingly, the same person, the same story, but a different book of Tanakh. Not Melochim Alevav, but Divrei Hayamim, which is called Chronicles, Al- Divrei Hayamim Beis, Perik Beis. You may know that Divrei Hayamim is a repeat where the Torah Tanakh goes through the whole history of the Jewish people from Adam, from creation from Adam, and goes through fast everything that happened in Divrei Hayamim, Aleph, and Beis. So therefore, all the events are repeated, huh? Interesting. Divrei Hayamim. Yes. So he says, bishnas arba Interesting pasuk. He begins building the Beis Hamikdash on the second month, which we already know from Alachim, but now there's an extra word, Basheni. On the second. On the second month, on the second, in the fourth year of his reign. What does Sheni mean? You already told me it was the second month, Bachaydish Hashani. What's Sheni? Bachaydish Hashani? Basheni. No, Zakhtar Balazar. Obviously, Sheni Liyedach Shemaynim Bailam Al Khusla. It's number two from the month of his anniversary. So Shana HaRaviyas, it was the fourth year of his reign, it was the second month, and it was month two from when we celebrate every year the anniversary of his kingdom. Flag the Gemara, please. Maske for Rabbin. Ve'eim Hashemi B'chaydish, maybe it means Bezir. B'chaydish Hashemi, the second month, B'chaydish, on the second day, Bezir. Zag the Gemara, no, im kein Sheni B'chaydish, behed yavik siv be. The Torah should have said, as it usually does, Sheni B'chaydish. Just like it says, we learned before, Be'echad L'chaydish, Say, Sheni B'chaydish, why B'chaydish? Ve'eim B'chaydish B'chaydish, maybe it means Monday. Okay. Not, not base year, maybe on a Monday. Shloyme started to build the base Amikdash on a Monday. So the Gemara Chadeh, number one, like Ashkechan Sheni B'Shabbos Diksif. We don't find that the Torah gives us days of weeks. The days of the week, Sunday, Monday. We don't find it. Suddenly here, from all the stories in the whole Tanakh, we have to know that it was on a Monday. Melef, it was the second day of the month. That the Torah gives us sometimes. Tells us which day. Aaron passed away the first day of the month. Moshe spoke the first day of the month. But this day of the week, we don't have it. When you don't know what it means, you always do a hekish. Compare the second sheni to the first sheni. The first time it says sheni in the Pasuk is Bachoidish Hasheni. Ma sheni kama chaydish, av sheni basra chaydish. The first time it says sheni, it's month. It's month, the second month. The second sheni, it's more logical to associate it with a month. Now it can't be the second day of the month, because then the Torah should have said Bachoidish Bachoidish. So what do we do? So we say, that the Torah is trying to tell us two things about Iyer. Number one, Iyer is the second month, right? When we count months. Number two, Iyer is the second month when Shleima Melech is making his own cheshben on nefesh of his life. There's two second months here. It happened in Iyer. What is Iyer? Iyer is Chodesh Hasheni. 
Iyer is something else. It's also a second month. But not only it's a second month because it's a second month of Nisan. For all of Klal Yisrael, it's also a second month for Shloyma HaMelech. Because Shloyma HaMelech, for him, his Malucha starts, the anniversary is always Rish Chodesh Nisan. So therefore, Iyer is considered the second month since his reign. And therefore, Rebbe Lazar has a proof that Rosh Hashanah Lemelachim is from Shloyma too. Is what is Rosh Chodesh Nisan. It's Nisan, and it's not Tammuz, and it's not Av, and it's not Elul, it's Nisan. He rejected Rabbi Yochanan's interpretation. Now, let's just mamish one mamish a half a minute. The Gemara says, Tanya Kavasei de Rabbi Yochanan. We have a proof to Rabbi Yochanan. Now, this doesn't mean Rabbi Yochanan versus Rabbi Lazar. It means we have a Rabbi that shows us that Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Lazar's ideas already came from the Tanoim who included this whole pilpul in this Braise. Now, it's funny how cryptic, without the Gemara, you would read the Braise, not a word makes sense. Now that you learn the Gemara, you'll see the whole Gemara in the Braise. See the Braise. How do we know we count from Nisan for kings? Shanemar, Vahibishmoinim, Shon of Abramayas, Shon of Latzeis Bnei Somer, it's Mitzrayim, which is the second month of Shloyma's reign on the Jewish people. So we know that Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim and Melochim are compared. Fine. Uks- this was what Rabbi Yochanan said. Now, Uksiv it says, Vayal Aaron Akoyan al Hurar Hor al Piyashem, Uksiv Ayibar Boyim Shana Ba'ashta Yasachoydesh, which is, of course, what tells us that it's not. Which tells us that of happened before Shvat. Which tells us that it's not Rishchodesh Eir. Next. Which tells us it's not Rishchodesh Sivan. We're still left with Tammuz of. Elul, uh, with, with Tammuz, with Tammuz of and other. So, Vaimer, finally it says, Vayachel Livnois, he started to build the Beis Hamikdash in the second month on the second, which teaches us that it's the second for him also as Rosh Hashanah Lemelach. Nonetheless, I should add that we still gain something significant from Rabbi Yochanan. Why? The Chidush Yaran says, as I emphasized, that from Rabbi Yochanan we learn the reason that it's Echad Benissim, Al Smitzias Mitzrayim. So that Rabbi Yochanan, is, Rabbi Yochanan doesn't give us the source, but the juxtaposition is important because it gives us the Hagdara, the Sibba of it. After a long discussion, back and forth, what's the source of Chazal to establish the first day of Nisan as the new year for all kings? That every single year on the first day of Nisan you automatically celebrate the anniversary of the day they became a king, as though they became a king that day, even though they may have become a king on a very different day. Rabbi Yochanan tried to bring his source, which was from Melachim Aleph Perik Vav, where Shloyma HaMelech, we are told, begins to build the first base on Mikdash, when? 480 years since Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, in the fourth year of his reign, in the second month, in the month of Ziv, which is the month of Ir. And Rabbi Yochanan says the Torah gives those two references in time in order to compare one to the other. Just as Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, we begin celebrating in Nisan, and that is its annual anniversary. The same would be true also when it comes to Melucha, Shloyma's reign, the fourth year. When would the fourth year begin? Irrelevant of when he became a king. If he became a king the day after Shavuos, or he became a king on Rishchidosh Nisan. The anniversary of Rishchidosh Nisan, we celebrate the new year. That was Rabbi Yochanan's source. The Gemara questioned it, and in conclusion, ultimately rejected it, at least as a sole source, and the reason is, as the Gemara says, because we are still left with the problem that it could be the anniversary of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim should be, was, would be celebrated Rish Chodesh Tammuz, Rish Chodesh Av, or Rish Chodesh Adr. And thus the Gemara introduced <coughs> Rebbe Lazar's explanation, which was a very <coughs> a similar concept but a different source, that Shloy Mahamelech begins to build the base Hamikdash Apostle in Divrei Hayam and Beis, Peregimel, when Bachoydesh Hasheni on the second month, which we already knew from the first Pasik, but the Pasik adds Basheni on the second month, on the second in the fourth year of his Malchus. What's the second month? Ear. What's on the second of the second month? 
So he says on the second of the second month means just like it's the second month month for Klal Yisrael, it's also the second month for the month king. for him personally. Because his <coughs> malucha anniversary begins in Nisith. So this is the second month of his malucha. Asks Ravina, maybe it's the second day of the month. <laughs> the second month on the second, right? Like we would say on the second in English. The second means the second day of the month. He says no, because the Tanakh always says Sheni Bachoidish or Shlishi Bachoidish. Here it says Bashay. Maybe it's the second day of the week. It's a Monday. He begins building it on the Monday. He says the Tanakh doesn't reference days of the week. Now, just, it's just an interesting diuk in Toysavus, the third to the last Toysavus, Sheni B'Shabbos, Loi Ashkechon, Toysavus says, really? V'ahodik siv, v'ahi boiker, yom sheni. In Parshas B'Resh, is v'ahi v'ahi boiker, yom sheni. Rebbe Kiyom Shlishi, what is that? The third day of the month, or the third day of the week? Or the second day of the week? He, of course, says yom sheni. Why doesn't he say yom rishon, yom echa? Because we're dealing with, we're dealing with sheni, so he gives that example. Mefarish, b'yirushalmi, so Yerushalmi asks this question right here in, in Rosh Hashanah. Yerushalmi asks this question in Talmud Yerushalmi. So Yerushalmi says, we don't learn from creation of the world. But what does it mean you don't learn? Why not? You're telling me the Tanakh doesn't reference days of the week. So it can't be that Bashani means on Monday. But you see, he says, you have to understand the Yerushalmi. The Lava Shabbos Kai. See how he touches the Yerushalmi. Yerushalmi is not saying you don't learn from, from Bereshit. Why can't you learn from Bereshit? It's also a date. He's not trying to give us the days of the week from Sunday to Shabbos. That's the date. Like we would say the second of the month. This is the second day since the creation of the world. It happens to be on a Monday. It happens to be on a Monday. The Vart here is not Monday. The Vart is Vayedev Abeker. It's what did Hashem create on the second day. That's what he means, Ein Lameidim of Briyas Yisrael. Not that you can't learn from Parshas Bereshis. You're dealing with Briyas Ha'olam. You're dealing with Briyas You're not trying to give me the day of the the date of the week of the day of the week. And therefore, Bashani cannot be interpreted he this way. That created the Monday. That created Monday. Yeah. <laughs> the word was Monday, Monday before. Yeah, yeah. That created Monday. Bemela. So, so Bashani doesn't mean the day of the week. Plus, plus, you have two Bashanis in the pasuk. So logic dictates, based on the formula of Hekish, that you compare one to the other, that it's Sheni Bachoidish, just like the first Sheni is Bachoidish HaSheni. So what would be the second month? The second month since his Melucha. And this is what the Gemara embraces, how we know that Rosh Hashanah L'Melochim is Be'echad Ben Nisim. We learn it from Shleimah, and therefore the anniversary is Rosh Hashanah. Yes, Rabbi Litzman? Parshas Neyach, he always speaks about all kinds of dates with the Mabu. Yes. And it does, it does the same reason, it doesn't uh, speak about anything specific in relation to this? Or why isn't it brought anyway? It seems to be important. In Neyach? Yeah, it's yeah. what it brings in on that day and that day, and it's a big machlekes, if it's, you know, in Rashi. So what's the connection with Malachim? I don't understand. That's my question. <laughs> if, they, if it's helpful in any way. I don't know, I mean, not that I know of. Zag de Gemara Vaiter, Amr Reb Chizda. Comes Reb Chizda, you see five lines from the bottom, Gimel Amr Aleph, Amr Reb Chizda. Reb Chizda gives us a serious qualification, which you would never know from the Mishnah. Lo Yishanu Ela Lamalchi Yisrael. This entire Mishnah that you count, the years of the kings from the month of Nisan, is only talking about... Jewish kings, when it comes to the kings of the nations of the world, you begin also counting, you begin counting their years from Tishrei, meaning they also have a Rosh Hashanah. It's not that we celebrate their anniversary on the day they were, they, on the day they assumed their monarch, their, their, they assumed the throne. They also have a Rosh Hashanah. But their Rosh Hashanah is the month of just like the Chachamim made a Rosh Hashanah for Malchi Yisrael, so that when we write on our documents the fourth year of this and this Jewish king, we begin the fourth year when Rosh Chodesh Nisan. And why was that so important? To be able to easily ascertain in a document if it might have been predated or postdated, which is a very important for legal purposes, when they were writing in documents 
the date in terms of the kingship of the non-Jewish king, they also needed an anniversary. And that anniversary was established when? On Rosh Chodesh Tishrei. Why did they make it different than Malchai Yisrael? But Pashtos, in order to distinguish between the two. In order to distinguish between the Jewish kings and the non-Jewish kings. So the Jewish kings, where you can connect their malucha with Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, when the Jewish people became a free nation, it belongs where? In the month of Nisan. Because that's when we became free and we can have our own leaders, we can have our own kings, because a free nation can have a king. Slaves can't have a king. That's why they're slaves. They're subjugated to another <coughs> nation. That's what the Dan brings. However, Malchi Umasa Oilam, they didn't become independent by Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim for characters. The Jews who emerged as a nation. So what do we do with them? We fall back on the day that is the most common Rosh Hashanah. What's the day that the most, for other things, for years, for Shmitin, for Yovelis, what is that? Echad Betishri, so we give that to the nations of the world. This is what the Ran says, the Ritva says, since it's a day of judgment for the whole world, Rosh Hashanah is Yom Hadin. For kol boy yoylam, as we will see later in Masechta Rosh Hashanah. So therefore it's appropriate that the kings of the whole world, also their Rosh Hashanah is also on Echad Betishrei. So this is Reb Chizda's qualification. The question is, where did Reb Chizda know this from? The Mishnah says, Rosh Hashanah l'malachim, mehecha teisa, to be mechadish, that there's a difference between Malchi Yisrael and Malchi Um Masail. So the Gemara is now, for the next sugya, going to delve in, in great detail and nuance, into Persian history. Persian history in the era after the Churban Bayis Rishon, <coughs> and the beginning of the era of the second Beis HaMikdash. And since, basically, this is a very detailed and nuanced history lesson, so it's important to give a few introductions, simply to understand the context. The emiss is, that right now, really, we should stop learning the Gemara and take out the Sefer Daniel and take out the Sefer Ezra and take out the Sefer Nehemiah and learn through thoroughly those Svarim. And then, immediately, the whole Amid Gemara and the Amid afterwards would flow very smoothly. So those who are searching for homework, you could learn, if you want to really appreciate this sugya, you learn through especially the two Svarim, Ezra and Nehemiah and the Tanakh, and it will, uh, it will uh, clarify the whole picture. But, let me give a very brief historical overview. The first Beis HaMikdash, and you have to recall these details, because the Gemara is going to keep on going back to every one of these details in one form or another. The first Beis HaMikdash was destroyed in our tradition in the Jewish calendar in the year Gimel Shin Lamed Ches. 3,000, 3,338. It's very easy to remember. Gimel Shalach. It's the day that the Jewish people were sent. Gimel, Shalach, 3338, since creation of the world. In the secular calendar, it's usually associated with the year 586, before the Common Era, was known BCE. The Common Era begins in the year zero, which means 2017 years ago. This is 2017 from when? From year zero. In the, in the secular Christian tradition, the year zero is supposedly the year when Yeshu HaNoitzri, when Oisei Yish, when Yashka was born, <laughs> And that's when they started to celebrate their calendar from the year zero. The Beis HaMikdash was destroyed in the year 70 after the Common Era. Either in the year 68 or 69 or 70, one of those three years, which means 70 years supposedly after he was born in the year zero. He was killed by the Romans a few decades before the Churban Bayesheni. So that begins what's called the Common Era, zero. That's why in their calendar there's BCE and CE. Because BCE is before the Common Era. And C is after the Common Era. So this is 2017, after the Common Era. The Beis HaMikdash of Churban Bayis Rishon is much before the Common Era, of course. So therefore, it's generally associated with the year 586 BCE. As many as you want. <laughs> You're just going backwards. As many as you want. As many as you want. So, some say 15.3 billion years, I mean, if you want. Right? As far as you want, you can go. I mean, and you record... Huh? According to the Hebrew, you mean according to the Hebrew day that we had? According to the Hebrew day? Oh, you go back a few thousand years. Yeah, a few thousand years. <coughs> 3338. So you go back a little. 338 is the Churban Bayes Rishon. 2017 is a track from uh, 5,000. I'm sorry, what? 
you would subtract 2017 from the current day. Yeah. yeah. Who destroyed the Beis Hamikdash? A man named Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was the Melech Bavel, Babylonia. Babylonia is the region that includes present day Iraq and included then also present day Iran. Nebuchadnezzar assumed the throne. He destroyed the first Beis Hamikdash. He exiled the Jewish people. He was a king for 45 years. When he died, he was succeeded by his son, whose name was Evil Miroidach. Evil Miroidach was a king for 23 years. When Evil Miroidach died, he was succeeded by his son, Balshatzer. Balshatzer was a king for two years, and then he was assassinated. He was assassinated by the Persians, who now destroyed Babylonian Empire, and now history moves from the Babylonian Empire to the Persian Empire. Of course, Persia is right near Babylonia, because you're dealing with Iran and Iraq, and they're still fighting. Iran and Iraq never had a day of, uh, never had a day of peace. Malchi <laughs> Paras, he says Paras, Persia, and this is Bavel, Babylonia, which is much the same, the same region, Iran and Iraq. And of course, the whole Talmud Bavli was uh, composed in Bavel, in present day Iraq. And of course, the Gan Eden, in Parshas Bereshis, you have the original Garden of Eden, the Gan Eden. And we have Nahor Yoytzim Yedin Lahashkes Asagana Misham Yipari. The river comes into the Ghana and then separates into four outlets. Two of the rivers are in Iraq. You have the Tigris River and you have the Euphrates River. What's called Nahar Chidekel is the Tigris River and Nahar Praz Euphrates River. And those between those two rivers, the action never ever stops. If you're hanging around those two rivers, you're in for action. It didn't. It started by other Marishan Unsegate. Never a dull moment. In Ganadin. This doesn't look like Ganadin at the moment. Mm-hmm. Hasn't been Ganadin for quite a few years, but that's the story over there. So now, after the reign of, of Balshatzer, yes, of Nchudnetzer, Evel Meroidach, Balshatzer, Balshatzer is defeated by Persia, and now history changes. You have what's called Malchus Paras, the Persian Empire. Now, the era from when Malchus Bavel was defeated by the Persians continues until the Greeks. The Greeks will come and defeat Persia. And now history will go from Persia to Malchus Yavan, to Greece. And that will change history completely. So you go from Babylonia to Persia, Bavel, Paras, and then you go to Yavan. You'll have Alexander Mogadon, Alexander of, Mas- of Macedonia, which is in Yavan in Greece, who ultimately takes over the world at the age of 29. This man rules over much of our planet, or at least the civilized planet, Imagine at the age of, of 29, there was already nothing for him to do. He ro- ruled the entire world, and he died shortly, uh, shortly after. Now, this kufa, from when the Persians uh, defeat the Babylonians until the Greeks defeat the Persians, during this kufa is a very important time in Jewish history. Why? This is the time that the second Beis Hamikdash is rebuilt. It's also the time when the Purim story happens. Yes. This is a tkufa that's described in Tanakh in three svarim, Sefer Daniel, Sefer Ezra, and Sefer Nehemiah. When we read these psukim, we know at least about four Persian kings. We know about a king named Daryavesh. We know... Uh, no, Persian, Persian, Iranian kings, not Jewish. One is going to be Jewish because of, uh, <laughs> because of Esther, but not without a Jewish father, of course. So we know at least of four Persian kings. There were more, but we know from the Psukim, we know about a man named Daryavish, number one. We know about another, the second one called Kairish, Cyrus. We know about the third one, Ahashverish. And then we know about the fourth one, who is Daryavish. This is not the first Daryavish, who is Daryavish Hamadi. This is Daryavish Haparsi, who is a son of Esther. And therefore he's technically Jew, halachically Jewish, and his father is Ahashverish. In a few places... The Pasuk speaks about another Persian king whose name is Archa, Archatashta, huh? Artachsha, Artachsha, and he, according to Chazal, was not one king, but this is a generic name for all Persian kings, just like the Pharaoh in Egypt. Every every Egyptian king is a Pharaoh, so this is a generic name for all Persian kings. Now, so again, we have Daryavish Hamadeh, we have Kodesh, we have Achashverosh, and we have Daryavesh HaParsi, who happens to be the son of Esther and Achashvesh. When you read all the psukim, the way Chazal explain it, 
it comes out that this is the chronological order of events. Daryavish is the one who defeated Babylonia. He was part of the plot to assassinate <coughs> Evel Meroid Balshatzer, who is, by the way, Vashti. Vashti, who marries Achashvedish, is a daughter of Balshatzer, which is why Achashvedish despised her because Vashti said, I'm the royal blood in the family. You're not the royal blood in the family, you're a peasant. That's what the Gemara says in Masech de Megillah, because she was from, Bab- from the Babylonian monarchy, and she was a royal, a royal girl. She was Balshatzer's daughter. Daryavish is part of the plot to assassinate Balshatzer, and he is the one who begins the Persian monarchy, the Persian rule. Daryavish dies, and Kairish is the one who uh, inherits the, the throne. And the first year of his rulership, he announces that the Jewish people can go back to Eretz Yisrael and rebuild the Beis HaMikdash. And this is very significant, because the Vuchadnetzer exiled most Jews to Babylonia, to Iraq. There's no Beis HaMikdash anymore. Yerushalayim is in ruins. Eretz Yisrael is desolate. After the Persians take over, Daryavish dies, Kairish takes over, he says, Hevra, you can go back. A man named Zerubavel takes a group of Jews and he makes the, what's called the first Aliyah Rishayna, the first Aliyah from Bavel, from Babylonia to Eretz Yisrael, because Kairish gives permission. However, people who already took over Eretz Yisrael and settled there got very upset. This is called an occupation, right? <laughs> this was an occupation. You're coming and you're stealing... They didn't call it Palestinian land, but whatever land they called it, you're stealing land, especially when they're building the Beis Hamikdash. So they write a letter to Kairish in Persia and Iran, and they say that they're destroying the land. They're thieves, they're murderers, they're criminals, and they ask Kairish to take back his permission to rebuild the Beis Hamikdash, and it, they achieve their goal. Kairish commands the work to be interrupted, and therefore the avoid to build the Beis Hamikdash stops. Who is this king that interrupted the building of the Beis HaMikdush? Here the Tanakh introduces him with that name of Artach Shasta. But Chazal say it's probably the same man, the same Kodesh, who gave the permission, also retracted the permission, we're just giving that generic name for him, or it may have been a Hashvedish, or it may have been a king between them that we don't know, but probably it was Kodesh himself. Daryavish and Kodesh, the first two kings of Persia, is only four years. They reign for four years, and then Kodesh is dead. Achashvedesh becomes the new king, the third king from what we know in the Pesukim, and this is the time when the whole story of Purim happens. So the continuation of the persecution of the Jews continues in very dramatic ways, to the point that Achashvedesh is about to to, uh, conform to the plot of Haman, to exterminate every single Jew, and of course... Till the end of his reign, despite the victory of Mordechai and Esther and the Jewish people, he does not allow the work in the Beis Hamikdash to renew. Achashverosh dies, and his son Daryavish, the son of Achashverosh and Esther, now becomes the Persian king. He's a Yiddish and a Shama. <coughs> right? No pun intended, quite literally. In the second year of Daryavish's reign, what he says is, go and rebuild your Beis Hamikdash. He actually discovers the permission that Kairish gave, the first Kairish gave after Daryavish gave to rebuild the Beis HaMikdash, and he reaffirms that document. How many years in between? Huh? How many years in between? Well, Daryavish and Kairish were four years together. After that, you have a Hashverish. A Hashverish was a king for 14 years, one four. And then after that, you have his son Daryavish. And the second year of Daryavish, he gives permission to the Jewish people to go to the Beis HaMikdash. A Hashverish himself, 14 years as a king. So all together, uh, 14 and 4. So 20 years after like years ba- after Persia defeated Babylonia, there's now permission to uh, to rebuild the second base on Mikdash. That's what happens. Now, they start building. Just the word Jews in there, it's Israel, but they had no, uh, no autonomy, no power. It was a tremendous intermarriage, tremendous assimilation. <laughs> yeah. Now, it takes a few years to build the Beis HaMikdash. They finish the second Beis HaMikdash on the third day of Adar, on the sixth year of Daryavish. The second year is when he gives permission. They build it for four years. Gimel Adar, in the sixth year of his reign, the Pasuk tells us in the Tanakh, they finish the second Beis HaMikdash. He was only 12 years old. Okay, we'll see. That's a discussion. After a little more of a month, comes Yudalad Nissen, the first time in many, many years the Jewish people offer a carbon Pesach. It was a Gewaldike moment. 
they finished Gimel Adr, one month later, a little more than a month later, they celebrate the Karp Pesach, the first time they have a Beis HaMikdash, they're back in Yerushalayim, the king is Daryovish, it's the sixth year, they could celebrate Pesach for the first time. He up comes in a Jew who's one of the most important Jews in Jewish history, his name is Ezra. Ezra now makes the second Aliyah. The first Aliyah was with Zerubbabel already years ago, with Kodesh, but that was interrupted. Now Ezra finally comes with the second Aliyah, Ezra wants all the Jews to come with him. You have a Beis HaMikdash. You could rebuild everything, come back to our homeland. Ezra is very, very disappointed. No more than 42,000 Jews agree to come back to Yisrael. Most of them feel very comfortable in Muncie. I mean in, um, <laughs> in, in, uh, in Bava. <laughs> they have shared in Gemara, there's a restaurant, even kosher 7-Elevens. Vostaf Mengen, what do we have to search for new places? So, Ezra is very disappointed, but he goes. He goes with his 42,000 Jews, and he arrives in the month of Av, in the seventh year of, in the seventh year of, again, the name that's used here is Artachshasta, which we're associating with Daryavesh. He leaves on Rosh Chodesh Nissen from Iraq, from Bavel. It takes him a few months, and in the month of Av, the seventh year of Daryavesh, he finally arrives in Eretz Yisrael, meaning he arrives a year and a half after they finish the Beis HaMikdash. They finish the Beis HaMikdash on Gimel Adr. That year they bring a carbon Pesach. That's the sixth year of Daryavesh. The next year, in the month of Av, Ezra arrives in Eretz Yisrael for the second Aliyah. He got a letter from the king Daryavesh, who gives him even more power, to go to the treasurers in Eretz Yisrael who work for the king and get money from them in order to help build the community, finish the Beis HaMikdash, and so forth. In comes another, and Ezra really begins rebuilding uh, Jewish life in an extraordinary way. But Ezra is helped by another special man who was the butler, he was the Sarah Mashkim, he was a brilliant Jew, he was brilliant, brilliant diplomat and politician, and he was hired by the Persian king Daryavish to be his butler, his Sarah Mashkim, and his name is Nehemia. Nehemia is very secure in Persia. He's one of the, he's in the palace. He's a very prominent person. There's a Jew whose name is Hanani, who's going to be an important person there. And he comes to Nehemia and he says, You're sitting here with the throne in Persia. Do you know what the Jews are going through in Eretz Yisrael? They have no money. There is persecution. The wall of Yerushalayim is still destroyed. The gates of Yerushalayim go up in fire. It's a bush and a cherpa how the Jewish people are living in Eretz Yisrael. They built the second base on Middash, but the poverty and their enemies were still powerful. This is what he comes and he tells Nehemiah. Nehemiah comes to his king and his queen on the 20th year of Daryavish. So this is already years after the Binyam Yisrael. And he says, give me permission. Can you let me go help my brothers and sisters in Eretz Yisrael? And Nehemiah gets permission, and Nehemiah now joins Ezra and helps Ezra revitalize the community. They will establish the Anshei Knesses Hagdoila, the men of the great assembly, which is basically 120 of the greatest sages, leaders, Nevi'im, including Mordechai, Chagai, Scharia, Malachi. The last one would be Shimon Atzadik. Just for reference, not to compare, the reason that the Knesset today, the Israeli parliament, has 120 seats is because they tried to establish it similar to the Knesset Agdoila, although I would not compare the Anshe Knesset Agdoila to the present day Knesset, but you should just realize that's why this, yeah, Lo Yadata, Vata Vata Yisraeli. It has the name Knesset and it, and it has 120, uh, 120 seats in the, in the, Israeli, uh, in the Israeli parliament. Now, 52 years after Daryavish conquered Bavel, 52 years after, 34 years after they renewed the work in the Beis HaMikdash, the Persian era comes to an end and the Greeks take over. And now history moves from Persia, it moves to Greece and Persia and Bavel, and ultimately Eretz Yisrael would go under Greek rule. This is already in the middle of the second Beis HaMikdash and this will of course lead to the Hanukkah events. The Purim events happened by Achashverosh before the second Beis Hamikdash, and the Hanukkah events would happen under the Yevonim after the second Beis Hamikdash. I should just add, there is here a stickle discrepancy because according to Persian history books that we have, there were many, many more Persian kings, and the Persian era continues for much further, and this is one of the very exciting conversations in Jewish history. 
when the Greek uh, when the Greek era begins and when the Persian era is defeated. The 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 events are clear. Okay, so now let's go to the Gemara, and this whole parsha is going to be discussed now in the Gemara. This whole parsha from beginning to end. Zog the Gemara. Reb Chizda established that Rosh Hashanah lemalachim for non-Jewish kings is when Tishre, not Nissan. Frag the Gemara. But it does ask, so the Gemara, the, the Gemara fractures. The Gemara wants to know, how does Reb Chizda know? Reb Chizda himself is going to explain how he knows this. And how do we know this? Shenema. There's a Pasik, and this is the opening of Sefer Nechemia. Nechemia Aleph Aleph. I'm going to read the whole Pasik. Divrei Nechemia ben Chachlaya. The words of Nechemia, the son of Chachlaya. Vayihi bechoydesh Kislev. Shnas Esrim. It was in the month of Kislev on the 20th year. Vani Yisi Bishushan Abira, the end of the Pasuk. Nechem Yeperik, Aleph, Pasuk, Aleph. I was living in Shushan, which is of course in Iran, and I was a butler of the king. This is Nechem speaking about the month of Kislev in the 20th year. And as we'll see what happens, a Jew comes over to him and says, why don't you help your brothers who are suffering terribly in the Holy Land? Next Pasuk. Perik Beis of Nechem Yeh, in the month of Nisan, again the 20th year of the king Artachshasta, who Chazal usually gave as a generic name, but are associating here with Dar Yovesh, the son of Achashvedesh, he comes to the king and says, Help me out, let me go. The month of Kislev is called the 20th year for. The month of Nisan is also the 20th year. If Rosh Hashanah of Nisan, if Rosh Hashanah for non Jewish kings was Rosh Chodesh Nisan, so this Nisan would be year 21. If Kislev is year 20, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, the king, celebrates a new anniversary. Nechemia is written, it's a Jewish document, it's a Torah document. Rosh Hashanah l'malachim is Rosh Chodesh Nisan. It's year 21, it's not year Esrim. Is the Charaya? There's no Rosh Hashanah l'malachim on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. So now what do we go back to? You can go to another month if you want, right? At least not between Kislev and Nisan. You got rid of Tevis, you got rid of Shvat, you got rid of Adi, you got rid of Nisan. You could still give me another month. But we go back to Tishrei, which is the most common Rosh Hashanah, because that's a Rosh Hashanah for many other things. <coughs> Toysvah says, the last Toysvah, Miklal de Nisan lav Rosh Hashanah, okay. Afal bi yishesh kama chadashan bi Nisan le Tishrei, sheyesh loy mashuhu Rosh Hashanah. Where does Reb Chista get that it's the first day of Tishrei? Maybe it's Iyer, maybe it's Sivan, maybe it's Tammuz, maybe it's Av. Mikol makam hoyel da fikte min Nisan. Once you took it out of Nisan, ukim neat, ukmea Tishrei. Give it to Tishrei. The Ashkech and the Havar Rosh Hashanah, the Kamad Varim, the Shmitten, the Yovlis. Since Rish, it's the most common Rosh Hashanah, so therefore they have to establish a Rosh Hashanah. They might have. They might. The Reb Chizda says they chose that, but certainly it's not Nisan because then Nisan and Kislev would not be Shnas Esrim. Nisan has to be a new year. Frag the Gemara one second. Bishlei Meheich Mele in the second pasuk Mefarish the Leartach Shasta. It says clearly, Shnas Esrim la Artach Shasta. Elahai, but the first Pasik, Mimai, the la Artach Shasta. It just says, Vahi Bechoydish Nissen. It says, Vahi Bechoydish Kislev Shnas Esrim. Maybe Dilma, maybe Liminyan Acherinahu. Maybe it's for some other event. Maybe it's the 20th year. In other words, really, Rish Chaydish Nissen is Rish Hashanah Lamalach. And therefore, Nissen would be. And therefore, Nisan, Lagabe Kislev would be year 21. But Kislev is not year 20 of the king. Kislev is year 20 of I don't know what. Huh? Since, since Persian won, since they won the World Series. Perhaps. I don't know what it's for. 20 years from Mr. Mikdash, no? 20 years from when he became king. The Galatia date. Why do you have to the It's January. What's January? You can't have the same pasuk uh, two different concepts. From the, from January. Okay, so could be twenty years. Could be twenty years for his own malchus, for example. Twenty years for his own malchus. I mean, his own anniversary. His own anniversary. Very good. His own anniversary. Twenty years. And then when we say twenty years in the month of Nisan, it's twenty years, right? 
Yeah. It's what? No, 20 years from that year. No, over there it says 20 years for the Malucha. It says Kislev 20 and it says Nissan 20. So we thought it's 20th year of the anniversary. In fact, the Gemara Nissan should be a new year. So what he's answering is, when it says 20 years for his Malucha in the month of Nissan, it's taka 20 years of his Malucha. The 20 before, Yutaka would have said, would be the year 19. However, you're not talking about that, you're talking about something else. Amir of Papas, or of Papas said, Shnas Esim, Shnas Esim, Lagzeir Shav. We already quoted this Rav Papa earlier mm-hmm. about Shnas Har Boyim, the Shnas Har Boyim of Aaron, and the Har Boyim Shon of Moshe, Shvat, and Av. We compare that it's Har Boyim to Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. So we brought this Rav Papa. Esim Shon, Shnas Esim is Lagzeir Shav. Ma Hasim, just like in the second Pasuk, in the Chemya Peirik Beis, it's La Artach Shasta. Av Hocha, the first Pasuk is La Artach Shasta. If that's the case, that means Kislev and Nissan are in the same year. That means Rosh Hashanah from Malachim, non-Jews, started Tishrei. So Tishrei was the anniversary, Kislev is the 20th year, and Nissan is still the 20th year. Good. Frek de Gemara, Umemai de Maisa de Kislev Kodem, Dilma Maisa de Nissan Kodem. How do you know the story of Kislev preceded the story of Nissan? Maybe it was the other way around. In other words, maybe Nehemiah came to the king first in the month of Nisan, which is the year 20, that started Rish Chodesh Nisan. And Kislev is still the same year, because the anniversary is only Rish Chodesh Nisan, not Rish Chodesh Tishrei. So if the Gemara Eloi Sal this should not come up in your mind. This is a foolish assumption. Why? The Tanya, the Braise says, Dvodim Sha'amar Chanoni L'Nechemiah B'Kislev, Amar Nechemiah L'Melech B'Nisan. When you read the story, the things that Hanani the Jew told Nehemiah in Kislev, he now goes to the king in Nisan and he pleads on his behalf. You can't go to the king and beg to help the Jewish people if you don't know the matzah of the Jewish people. So it has to be a chronological order that Kislev came before Nisan. So if Rish Chodesh Nisan is a new Rish Hashanah, the second story has to give me a new year, year 21, not year 20. So the Chizda has apparently conclusive proof that this is it. That Rosh Hashanah for non-Jewish kings like Daryavesh does not begin with Nisan, it begins with Tishrei. And therefore Kislev and Nisan are all together in the same year, which happens to be the 20th year since Artach Shasta or Daryavesh became a king. And now the Gemara specifies this Bryson. It gave us the point, and now it specifies the Bryson, the story. And here you're going to have the full quote. Dvarim Sha'amar Chanoni L'Nechemiah B'Kislev. What are the things that Hanani said to Nehemiah and Kislev? Shenemar. And again, this is the opening pasuk of Sefer Nehemiah. The first three psukim of the whole book. Divrei Nehemiah ben Chachlaye, Vayi b'chodesh Kislev, Shnas Esrim, Vaniya Yisi b'shushan Abira. Vayyavoy Hanani echod me'achai. Hanani is one of my brothers, comes to me. Who? Ba'anoshim Yehuda. People who arrived from Yehuda, from Judea, which was the name of the region of Eretz Yisrael around Yerushalayim, with Malche Yehuda reigned for all these years till Nebuchadnezzar destroyed them and exiled them, so it's called Yehuda, Judea. They come from Yehuda, they come down to Persia. Ve'eshalem, and I say, Shalom Aleichem, I say, Ala Yehudim, ha-pleita, she-nishadu min Yerushalayim. I asked them about the welfare of the Jewish people, the pleita, those who were left over, who were left over from the Shvi, meaning the Jews that were saved from captivity from Nebuchadnezzar. The Jews that never went into exile, they were saved from going into captivity in Babel, and they remained in Eretz Yisrael. How are they doing? And I also asked him about Yerushalayim. He asks about the people, and he asks about the city. Vayoyimruli and these people, together with Hanani, tell me, those who remained and were saved from Nebuchadnezzar's captivity in the country, they are suffering, they're in a terrible situation, it's a shanda, they're disgraced. And the wall of Yerushalayim is breached. And the portals, the, the portals of Yerushalayim have been ignited in fire. Which means, even though at this point we will see the second base Amikdash was rebuilt, it was already built in the sixth year of Daryavish, and this is the 20th year of Daryavish, but nonetheless the walls of Yerushalayim were still breached, and the, much of Yerushalayim was still destroyed the way it was after the conquest of Babylonia. So Nehemiah, of course, is still in Bavel or in Persia. He is the butler of the king. And Ezra's he, already in... Already yes, in Ezra's Nehemiah. already there from the seventh year. Right. This is why, 13 why years is later. Why asking all of his curious about the ones that were there from beforehand? What about the ones that, that Ezra brought? And it doesn't say that they were brought. They came with wealth from Persia. Right, Ezra so that we're going to see soon, yeah. That we're going to see soon. Huh? Yeah? The, 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 the 
Mashvi'ah. Yeah, Mashvi'ah, the first ones, yeah. Well, when did Alexander... The ones that never went. The right, they never went. They yeah. went to Barbara. Like Gedalia, who was assassinated, right. yeah. Well, when did Alexander the Great... That that's already that now we're dealing with Greece. That's the next that's the next chapter in history. Later, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's after, of course. Yeah. The Jews kept on being persecuted by the Shemroinim, by the Samaritans. They were the enemies. You asked who were the enemies. They were the ones who didn't allow the construction of the Beis Amikdash. And finally Alexander the Great gave the Jews permission to uh did Alexander put him down? Or the no, 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 no. They were there before. They were there from Sancheriv. The Assyrian king had a strategy. He is the one who exiled the Aseris Hashvatim 150 years before the Churban Beis HaMikdash. This already takes us to a previous chapter. 150 years before the Churban Beis Rishon, 10 of the tribes under Malchus Yisrael in the northern kingdom are exiled by the Assyrian king. And within a century and a half, they're lost, and they're lost forever. It's one of the great mysteries of Jewish history, how in such a short amount of time, so many Jews simply disappeared from the horizon, even though every few months you hear about another tribe in Afghanistan, in Africa, in Japan, who claims that, uh, that, that they shake Hadassim. Huh? <laughs> 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 but is that not the ten years that we don't know about? Is it the years that kind of got lost? Yeah. That's it? No, that's uh, Persia, Greece. Yeah, that's the beginning of Bayes Rishon. Yeah, things haven't changed much. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so that's that. The Shemroinim are there before because Sanchev had a philosophy that the best way to stifle revolution is you turn everybody into refugees. Nobody feels comfortable. What do you mean? He went from Israel. You got a point. You got a point. Zok the Gemara Viter. So this is Hanani speaking to Nehemia when in the month of Kislev. Now Nehemia, I guess it takes him a few months. He goes to the king. He tells it over to the king in Nisan. Now come to the next Pesukim. This is Perik Beis, Shenemar. In the month of Nisan, the 20th year of Artakshasta, the king. Remember, Nechemia is a butler. They bring me wine to give before the king. I lift up the wine. And I give it to the king. I give it to Artakshasta. Remember, I never showed my moods to him. He never saw me with a bad face. I was always happy. I was always jolly. I was always in a good disposition. And suddenly, for the first time, he sees that I seem depressed. The king tells me, It's almost a verbatim quote of Yosef, who speaks to the butler in Egypt, in the, in the cell, in Vayesh, says, Madua Pnechem Royim Ayoyim, because he saw Vihinam Zoyafim. So here Nechemia is also a butler, and this time the king, right, turns to him and says, Madua Pnechem Royim, Ve'ata Ein Chechoyla, you're not sick. Ein Zekim Roya Leiv, ah, you're bad, you want to kill me, you want to assassinate me, you want to destroy me, and that's why you're a sour face, you're about to murder. Now the Marsha comes and says, where does a king suddenly come up? You're giving wine and you have a bad face. It means you want to kill me? You want to murder me? So the Marsha says that Nehemiah would always taste the wine before he gave it to the king. Why? Because that's what they used to do. People like to poison kings, right? This was a very, this was the, probably the most common way of assassinating people. You poison them. So they always had a taster. So the butler's job, since he was responsible, he was the taster. So he would always taste the wine before... He gave it to the king. The Marsha says, when Nehemia heard about the situation in Yerushalayim, he segregated himself from drinking wine. He went into a shtikel avelis. So he couldn't drink the wine. So the king says, ah, there's poison in the wine. That's why you want to kill me. That's how the Marsha explains what happened. Vas epis, somebody has a sour face, it means he's, you're going to kill me. But that's what he says. Roya lev, you're bad. Va'ira harbi ma'oid. I was very, very fearful. I, I read recently, the Rechagav, there was a, a, there's a Yemenite Yid in it, so his name is Shalom Kenagar. He was the one who executed uh, Eichmann, Yemach uh, Shemoy, in 1962. And uh, so he was the, one of his guards. So he said that he used to taste all the food that would go to Eichmann in the cell before he ate it. Why? Because they were afraid that somebody's going to want to poison the food and they wanted to keep him on trial and then execute him, you know, according to law. So he came to his commander and he said, I don't understand. And if there's poison in the food, he says, so, so I'm going to die. 
So he says, listen, from you I have many. From Eichmann I don't have, uh, I don't have many. You know what I mean? This is something I have. I'm sorry, but uh, he was conveying, uh, it's called, this is called Israeli humor. It's called Israeli humor. Mimcha huh? yesh I personally would give it to a dog, but... Yes, yes, okay. Anyway, so Nehemiah is not tasting the wine. He accuses him of trying to assassinate him. No, you're not dealing here with a democracy. A king decides that you want to assassinate him. You're going to come out with a head shorter. I was terrified. I tell the king, May the king live forever. I don't want you to die. I want you to live forever. Why should my face not look bad? Asher Ha'ir, the city, which is base Kivris Avoisai, the home where my forefathers are buried, Charevet destroyed, Ushaharel, Uchlu Vayesh, and her portals are consumed by fire. How do you expect me not to be sad and dejected? So the king says, Almaze Atamavakish. So what do you want? What do you want from me? So Nehemiah says, Before I opened my mouth, by the king, he first davened. I davened to the God of heaven to help me in the next, uh, in the next moment. I turn to the Melech, I say, If you would be favorably, and if you would be favorable, and I would find favor in your eyes, I'm asking you, Yehuda, send me to Judea, the city where my forefathers are buried, let me rebuild it. The king tells me, and one more person, Shegal is his intimate partner. That's what Shegal means. Shegal means Tashmish, intimacy. Shegal is his wife or his intimate partner is sitting near him. And they turn to me and they say, Ad Masai Yia Mahalochach, how long are you going to go for? Or Masai Toshev, when are you coming back? So here you have to put in a few words. He told them, the king was happy, he sent me, and I gave him a time when I'm going to return. These are the words Nehemiah tells the king in the month of Nisan after he heard about the situation in the month of Kislev. So how could you tell me that Nisan came before Kislev? And Nisan is Rosh Hashanah Lemelachim, and Kislev comes after Nisan. It doesn't make sense. This means Kislev came before Nisan. This means Nisan is the same year like Kislev. This means that Rosh Chodesh Nisan is not Rosh Hashanah Lemelachim, it's Rosh Chodesh Tishrei. Reb Chizda proved his For the case. Gaisha king. Huh? For the, Gaisha king. For the non-Jewish kings, like in this case, Dayavish. Dayavish. Yeah. Hanani was in Israel before? Yeah. Hanani came back from Eretz Yisrael. He came for a visit. He came... He came for Hanukkah to the parents. There's no Hanukkah yet. <laughs> he came for midwinter vacation. Midwinter vacation. Huh? The vacation came from the huh? What do you think they came for? Erev Purim. No, Kislev. It's Kislev. Meisev Rabbi Yosef. It's Nishtazai Pash. Meisev Rabbi Yosef. Rabbi Yosef asked a question. Right, there was there was no Hanukkah yet. Yeah. No Hanukkah and Purim there was, yeah. Purim there was. Mesa Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yosef asked a question on on, on who on Ibchizda. It's a very interesting question. Now we'll have Halton Cup here a little bit, but based on the history you'll get it. There's a Pasak in Chagai. Chagai is one of the Treyasar, one of the smallest Farim in Tanakh. Chagai is one of the prophets who lived during this time. He was one of the Anshe Knesset Sagdoyla. He was a colleague of Scharia, Malachi, Mordechai. These are all the Nevi'im who lived after the destruction of the first Beis Hamikdash in the beginning of the era, during the time of Purim. And after that, Nevuah ends. The Gemara says, Esther saves man ha Nevuah. In the time of Esther ends Nevuah. Chagai has a sefer called Chagai. In Perik Aleph it says, Biyoyim Esrim Varba Lechoydish Beshishi. Chavdalad of. The 24th day of the 6th month, I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Elo. Be'yoyim esim abo l'chodesh b'ashish. The 24th of the month, of the 6th, the 6th month, in other words, Elo. Bishnas shtayim lidar yovish. On the 2nd year of dar yovish, he continues and he says, we started to work for this building of the 2nd Beis Hamikdash. Remember, the original Kairish allowed them to build, but then it stopped. Achashverosh took over for 14 years, stopped. His son Daryovish on the second year 
gives permission to start again renovation of the second base Hamikdash. When Shna Shtayim Ledar Yavish, Uksiv, the next Posik. In Chagai, right after this, the Posik says, Perik Beis of Chagai, Bashvi, in the seventh month, in other words, the next month Tishrei. Now you have here in parentheses, Bashna Shtayim. And the reason it's in parentheses is because it's not in the Posik. It just says, Bashvi, Be'esrim Be'echad Lechoidish, Hoyodvar Hashem Be'yad Chagai Hanavi. On Tishrei, the 21st day, which we call Hashem Rabbah, Hashem spoke to Chagai Hanavi. What does he tell him? He tells him the famous Nevuah, which you all heard, Godel Yie Kvoid Habayis Azah Achrim in Arishim. Don't worry, Chagai. The glory of this second Beis Hamikdash is going to be far greater than the first Beis Hamikdash. The Gemara says, what does it mean? Does it mean that the second Beis Hamikdash lasted longer? The first one was 410 years, the second one was 420 years. But this Nevuah happens one month after Daryavish gives permission to start building. This is in the month of Elul. Which day in Elul? Esrim Varbach of Dalet Elul. Literally one month later, Chafal of Tishrei, the end of Sukkot. Hashem tells Chagai, this will be a beautiful Beis HaMikdash. Well, no, got interrupted. It was over. The Samaritans said they have been making havoc and, and it would stop. So which he, year was the year that they started using the second Beis HaMikdash? allowed them to build it in the second year and then four years later it was finished in the sixth year. Not after the common era. The common era is at the end of Bayashani. Zero. It's 2017 years ago. Gimel Shilam and Ches is Churban Bayas Rishon. Yeah. Hundreds of years before. Churban Bayas Rishon. There's Churban Bayas Rishon. There's 70 years of Galus Bava. There's a new Beis Hamikdash that lasts for 420 years. And then it's Churban Bayashani. And Christianity is at the end of Bayashani. So, so what happens here? It seems like it's the same year. That's why it says Bishna Shtayim. It's one month apart so in the second year. Said, right, right. Mean, so, yeah. right. So Rashi says Bishishi, take a look at Rashi, Bishishi Bishna Shtayim. Shneim b'nevuas Chagai. Both are in Nevuas Chagai. Nivdek b'mikri v'le nimtze kasa v'posik sheni Bishna Shtayim. In the second posik, it doesn't say Shna Shtayim. In the first posik, it says, Ach yesh loimar, shele posik shele maila himenu koyu shekosu by Bishna Shtayim. The reason the Gemara brings in Bishna Shtayim is he means from the first posik. But the point is very simple. The point is that between Elul and Tishrei, we're not counting a new year. Because if we were, Frag the Gemara vim isa, if Reb Chizda was right, that Rosh Hashanah for Malchi Yom Asylum is Betishrei, Bishvi Bishna Shalish mi Bayalei. You can't just tell me the 24th day of the 6th month of Elul in the 2nd year of Daryavish, and in the next Pasuk tell me, and in the 7th month, on day 21, Hashem spoke to me. It's a new year. You have to say, you gave me a year, a Pasuk before, the year changed, give me the new year. Is the Because you said Exactly. Since you said Bishnah Shtayim, you have to tell me Shalish. Is dacha, exactly. Is dacha rai, that's why there's a parenthesis. Right. That's how Rashi is right. interpreting right. that the Gemara is taking Bishnah Shtayim and putting it here. In other words, it's as though the Pasuk is telling me it happened Bishnah Shtayim. If Rosh Hashanah the Malachim is Rosh Chodesh Tishrei, this is Shnas Shalash. Is dacha rai, Reb Chizda was wrong. Rosh Hashanah the Malachim is Rosh Chodesh Nisim. And therefore, Elul and Tishrei are the same year, the <coughs> second year of Daryavish. Omar Reb Abo, Reb Abo comes up with a whole new idea. This man who he's suddenly calling Kaidish, we'll see in a moment. This is Shtayim Le Daryavish. The Gemara is going to ask in a moment, but who's talking about Kaidish? Okay, one sec. This Kaidish was a good guy. He was a Melech Kosher. So to, huh? yeah. the, Jews, the Jews pay tribute to his kindness, to his goodness. How? Jews have their own ways of showing honor, that they treated him like Malchi Yisrael in the sense of his Rosh Hashanah is going to be Rosh Chodesh Nisan, not Rosh Chodesh Tishrei. So therefore, the second year of Daryovish goes from Elul and it continues in Tishrei. And therefore, the Bchizda is right. Even though we're talking about Daryovish, not Kodesh, the Gemara is going to say in a moment that this is dealing with Daryovish. He is the man who, of course, is the one who gave them permission to rebuild the Beis Hamikdash, and, and that's why he's called the Melech Kosh. And he is Jewish. Right. Was, See, nobody was, knew it. It wasn't like, uh, you know what I mean? Jewish, yeah. It wasn't on that Wikipedia was that he was Jewish. Jewish. Huh? No, no, no. Daryavish, yeah. But he calls him Kaidish. He calls him. 
We're going to see in a moment. In fact, he, he's going to explain that the only reason he called him Kodesh is not because his name was Kodesh, because Kodesh is from Lashon Kosher. Kodesh is Kosher. So he wanted to say he's a good, he's a good king, they called him Kodesh. Shikr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rashi says, Kodesh Melech Kosher Haya, Kiloimar, Al Shem Shahaya Kosher, Karu Kodesh. The Jews gave him a nickname. Instead of calling him Kosher, they called him Kodesh. Because Kodesh has in it the letters Chav, Shin Rech, Ushmai Meidalov. They gave him a name that would testify what they felt about him. They felt that he's a Kosher person, he's a good man. Lefichach Manoloi Kamalchi Yisrael. Wasn't this Kodesh before Achashvedish? There was a real Kodesh before Achashvedish. No, this is the man who allowed the completion of the Beis Hamikdash. Yeah. Completion of the Beis Hamikdash. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.